Hi, welcome back. It's me, Scientist Kate. This is Great Kindergarten, Sunlight and Weather, Lesson 3.2, Discussing Warming Over Time. For this lesson, you won't need any materials at home. You'll just need your science brain to do all sorts of thinking today. Are you ready to do science today? Me too. Let's go. Hi, welcome back. Let's review the model we used in the last lesson. Do you remember what we did? I set up an investigation. Do you remember what the lamp represents in our model? Yeah, it represents the sun. And what does the black foam rubber represent? Yeah, it represents the surface of the playground. Do you remember what this tool is called? The one that records and measures um, temperature? Yeah, it's called a thermometer. You've really been listening. I'm proud of you. Okay, so in the last lesson, we used this model to determine what would happen the longer the light was left on. And I made this timeline to show our results. So when we left the lamp off, we were, we were trying to show nighttime. And when we looked at the thermometer, the thermometer said it was cool. And that makes sense. It's usually pretty cool at nighttime. Then we turn the lamp on. And after waiting three minutes to represent morning, we found the thermometer had warmed up and now it says warm. Then when we left it on for another three minutes, which gave us a total of six minutes, and we checked the thermometer, it said hot. And that represents how the longer the sunlight um, shines on a surface during the day, the warmer it gets. So it started out cool, and then in the morning it got warm, and then in the afternoon it got hot. I wonder why. Why do you think that happens? Think about that. Today we're going to be sharing our data from the model and organizing it onto a graph. We've used graphs before, right? Yeah. I hope you remember how to use a graph. If you don't remember, that's okay. We're gonna go through it right now. This type of graph is called a bar graph. So we're gonna be making bars that go up to the same level as whatever temperature color we want to show. So when the light was not shining and we were representing nighttime, do you remember what temperature the thermometer showed us? Yeah, it showed us cool as the temperature. And do you remember which color along the side here represents the temperature of cool? If you do, point at it right now. Cool is represented by the color green. So purple is very cold, blue is cold, green is cool, Yellow is warm, orange is hot, and red is very hot. So we want our bar to go up to which color? Green to represent cool. I'm gonna draw the bar now. There it is, do you see it? I made the bar going up to green to represent cool for the nighttime. Okay, let's go to the next one. How do, we represented morning, by using just a short amount of sunlight on the black rubber foam. Do you remember what temperature we got for morning on our thermometer? Yeah, we got warm. Do you remember which color on this bar graph will show us warm? It's yellow. So I'm going to make the bar for shorter time go up to yellow. Are you ready? There it is. Does that make sense to you? I started out with a bar that represents cool for nighttime, and now I have a bar that represents warm for morning time. Now, do you remember the temperature that the thermometer told us for afternoon? Yeah, it showed us a measurement of hot. So I'm gonna put a bar on the graph for the afternoon it goes up to the color for hot. Do you remember which color represents hot on this graph? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's orange. Here we go. Are you ready for the bar? Whoop. There it is. Now, what do you notice about the bars on the bar graph? Is the temperature getting higher or is the temperature getting lower? The temperature is getting higher. You can tell because the bars are getting taller and taller and taller. So we're getting a hotter and hotter temperature throughout the day. Awesome job helping me make a graph. So what happens to a surface when the light shines on it for a shorter time? It gets warm. What happens to a surface when a light shines on it for a longer time? It gets hot. What did we figure out? Tell me what you figured out from helping me make this bar graph. Thanks for sharing your ideas. I figured out that the temperature outside on the playground is getting warmer and warmer and warmer. So it starts out cool at night, it gets warm in the morning, and then it gets hot in the afternoon. What is our evidence to prove that that's true? Yeah, we have our data and our graph right here. So if someone didn't believe us, we could show them, hey, we measured it, and this is true. This is our evidence to support our claim. Okay, are you ready to move your body? Oh yeah, I am. I'm ready to move. I'm ready for a little recess in the middle of science. Are you? All right, go ahead and get your body loosened up. We're going to do some warmer and cooler movement routines. Here we go. We've done this routine before, so maybe you remember it and you can help me out. If we're trying to use our body to show something is cold, what do we do? Yeah, we keep our fingers really still. I'm putting mine up here so you can see them, but if you wanted to, you could stand up and put your arms down by your side and keep your fingers really stiff to show cold, like you're frozen, like a popsicle. <laughs> okay, great. So show me cold, ready? Great. Now show me cool. For cool, we remember we wiggle our fingers, but we do it really slowly just to show that it's warming up just a little. Now show me warm. Warm is wiggling your fingers quickly. Very good. All right, now, do you remember hot? For hot, you put your hands over your head and you wiggle your fingers really fast. Woo! Hot, 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 Very good. Ooh, you are great at the movement routine. I'm impressed with you. You got moves. Nice. All right, now, here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna go back to the warming over time graph and I'm gonna show each of the three bars again. And every time I show a bar, I want you to use your body to show me what temperature it is. Are you ready? I know you love a challenge, I do too. Here we go. Okay, at night we said the temperature is what? Show me with your body. I'm looking. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Nice. At night, the temperature is cool, so you should be doing your fingers kind of soft like this. Is it cold? No. Is it hot? No. It's just cool. Nice. Very cool. All right, what about in the morning? Look at the bar that I'm going to show you. Show me with your body what temperature the graph is showing for the morning time. Uh-huh, you got it, it's warm. So we're gonna get our fingers going a little faster than they were before. We're gonna kind of show that there's more energy there. Okay, are you ready for the last bar? I bet you are. Wow, show me with your body what temperature is being shown here. Yup, exactly right, it's hot. Woo it's hot in the afternoon. It's hot in the afternoon. Very good. All right. Now, whew, really got my exercise in there. Okay, are you ready to move on? Awesome. Here's what I did. Take a look at this. 
This shows us the temperatures. Do you remember them? Very hot, hot, warm, cool, cold, and very cold. Now, I made this. This is called a table, but it's not like a table that you eat dinner off of. Scientists call this a table, and it's a way that they can help organize data and compare. So what I did was I went in my backyard and I used my big yellow thermometer and I took the temperature. I recorded the temperature in the morning and in the afternoon for six days. One, two, three, four, five, six, six whole days I recorded in the morning and the afternoon. And I'm going to tell you what those temperatures are. But first, I want you to make a prediction. I want you to guess. Do you think the temperatures that I recorded are going to be warmer in the morning or in the afternoon? Hmm, interesting. Why do you say that? Hmm. Sounds like you're really doing some science thinking, and I like it. All right, are you ready to see the real data and see if your prediction was right? Okay, on day one, I took a measurement on my thermometer in the morning, and it was 20 degrees. Now take a look at this. How can we describe 20 degrees? You can see I've colored it green. So I'm just going to match the green color up with the green color over here. And you can see that it is cool. Now, do you think the afternoon is going to be warmer or colder? Let's find out. The afternoon was 26 degrees. Which of these numbers is bigger, 20 or 26? Yeah, 26 is bigger. You can also see that the box is colored yellow and yellow is listed over here as warm and warm is warmer than cool. So point to which of these two numbers is the warmer temperature. Yeah, it was the afternoon. Now let's check day two. On day two, the temperature in the morning was 22 degrees. You can see that it's colored green, so it's cool. Do you think the afternoon will be warmer or cooler? Let's check and see. Oh, it was 30 degrees. Which number is bigger, 22 or 30? Now let's see, this box is orange. When I go over here to see what orange means, it means hot. So which was a warmer temperature, morning or afternoon? Yeah, afternoon was warmer. Are you ready for day three? Okay, in the morning, I recorded the temperature as 24 degrees. That's yellow. So I look over here and I see that yellow means warm. Ooh, we had a warm morning. Hmm. Do you think the afternoon will be warmer or cooler? My, temp my thermometer read 34 degrees. Which number is bigger, 24 or 34? The box is red, and that means very hot. So which of these two times was warmer? Yeah, the afternoon. Hmm, I'm starting to see a pattern. Do you see a pattern? I'm noticing that every single day so far, the afternoon is the warmer time. Let's keep going and see if the pattern stays the same. Day four, in the morning, I recorded the temperature as 18 degrees. If you look at the box, it's blue. What does blue represent on this scale? Yeah, it represents cold, very good. In the afternoon, the temperature was 24 degrees. Which number is bigger, 18 or 24? And the box is yellow, which means warm. So which is warmer, the morning or the afternoon? Yeah, 
the afternoon again. Okay, let's look at day five. 22 was the morning, 28 was the afternoon. I'm gonna give you a second to look and point to the temperature you think is warmer. Did you pick 28? 28 is a bigger number than 22. And we can also tell because this one is green, which is cool, and this one is orange, which is hot, so we know the afternoon was warmer. Now, what do you think about day six? Do you think our pattern will keep going and we'll have warmer afternoons? That's my prediction. Okay, let's find out and see if we're right. In the morning, it was 26 degrees, and in the afternoon, it was 28 degrees. Which was warmer, morning or afternoon? Did you pick afternoon? Awesome, you really got the hang of this. Okay, so was my backyard usually warmer in the morning or in the afternoon? Yeah, the afternoon. Do you have any evidence that makes you think that? Yeah, I think this is really good evidence. We took real measurements with a very scientific tool called a thermometer, and then we compared them. And every single day, the afternoon was warmer than the morning. That's really strong evidence. What causes my backyard to be warmer in the afternoon? What do you think? Did your answer have something to do with sunshine? Yeah, afternoons are warmer because there's been more time for the sunlight to shine down, just like in our model. When we only have a, a little bit of sunshine in the morning, it's not as warm. But after the day goes on, hour after hour, more and more sunlight heats up the surface of the earth. That's why afternoons are warmer. Great job. Now we're going to do something else scientists do, which is read. Remember that this is a reference book. It's called the Handbook of Models. And the purpose of a reference book is to give a lot of information about a topic. And you don't have to read a reference book at the very beginning all the way through till the end. You can open up a reference book to different pages and just jump to the information you want. So it's different from a story. All right, I'm jumping to page 16 and 17. Do you see the page numbers at the bottom? This is page 16 and this is page 17. Are you ready to hear me read? Listen, models help scientists investigate slow and fast things. Sometimes scientists want to investigate a very slow thing. They can't wait and watch it happen. It might take a hundred years or even longer. Sometimes scientists want to investigate a very fast thing. If they try to observe something that happens too fast, they might miss it. To investigate slow and fast things, scientists use models. A model can be slower or faster than the real thing. So let's take a look at these pictures. These pictures are showing us examples of models. On the top, this is a stream. A stream is like a little river. And this is a real stream. So if scientists wanted to observe and investigate a real stream, they could use a model stream. See this model that they've made? It looks like right here, they're gonna dig out a space and maybe put water through it so they can study how the stream flows. That would be really helpful. Down here on the bottom, we see, oh my goodness, a fly, eee, a little buzzy fly. Bzzz. This is a real fly. Flies can be really difficult to study. Do you think that's because they move really slow or really fast? Yeah, they move really fast. So scientists have made this model fly. And the model fly 
it acts exactly like a real fly, but they can slow it down and really study how flies move. That is so cool. I love science. Okay, now pages 18 and 19 are going to tell us more information about the two models we just looked at. Are you ready? This says stream model. Scientists made a model of a stream flowing through a forest. The scientist asked, will the stream get deeper as the water carries away little bits of sand and dirt? They found out that a stream will get deeper and wider over time. Why did they need a model to learn about streams? Like, why couldn't they just go to the stream and look at it in real life? Well, streams change the land very slowly. Scientists would have had to wait years to observe how a real stream changes the land. How is the model like a real stream? The model was like a real stream because it had moving water and little bits of sand that could be moved around. How was the model different from a real stream? The land in the model changed much more quickly than the land in a real stream. The stream model was much smaller than a real stream, and it had little sticks on the sides instead of real trees. Awesome. So how is our lamp model the same as the models that we read about in the book? How is it different? Let's think about that. Hmm. How is our model the same as the model we just read about in the book? Well, it was a lot smaller than real life, just like the stream model. And it showed us in a smaller amount of time, something that would take a long time to see in real life. How is our model different from the book? Yeah, our model doesn't use water and it doesn't study um, rivers and streams and land. Our model is helping us study what? Temperature and how temperature changes throughout the day. Awesome job, you just compared. You said how things were the same and how they were different. Great job. Now, to wrap up, how have we worked as scientists today? Scientists do all kinds of things. They don't just do experiments. They observe, meaning they look and hear and smell and see and touch and all of those things. Did we observe today? Mm, not really. Did we record things today? Did we write things down? Yep, we recorded the temperatures in my backyard. Do you remember that? Did we compare today? Yeah, we compared earlier when we compared morning and afternoon temperatures in my backyard. And we also compared the model of the stream to the model that we made with the lamp. So yes, we did compare. Did we communicate today? Did we share our ideas with somebody else? Hmm, we did talk to each other, but did we share out with anybody in our family really? Maybe you did, I didn't. So I'm not gonna circle that one today. Did we make models today? Hmm, we talked about models, but we didn't make any today. Did we read today? Yes, we read about models and how they can be used to help scientists study things that are moving slowly and things that are moving really fast. Great job. Thanks so much for joining me for lesson 3.2, discussing warming over time. Ms. Diaz will be back with you to do lesson 3.3 and 3.4. I'll see you again for chapter four. I hope you have a great afternoon and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.